preach the gospel to every creature. 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 Hello in the name of Jesus Christ and welcome to a Grace Gospel Evangelism quick message and today we're going to be talking about the, the, the candlestick and even the candles and stuff like that in the book of Revelation and a few other passages and the reason for doing this is because I've heard a lot of heretical teachers out there teaching you know when the, the candlestick is removed from the church in Ephesus that that is akin to someone losing salvation and that is actually fallacious and actually nonsensical and goes against the scripture itself you know they've literally had to oisegete the hell out of that to make it fit their, their wicked perverse you know doctrine of civic loss all right obviously revelation chapter 2 is talking about literal churches but we're going to just emphasize on the church ephesus i quickly read you know that the passages which is verses you know one to six in revelation 2 and then i'll break down a couple of the the verses so we can get a better understanding all right so here we go <clears throat> under the angel of the church of ephesus write these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks i know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them lies, and hast borne, and hast patient, and hast for my name's sake hast laboured, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent but this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate so there's you know the message there you know it sounds harsh and it is reasonably harsh there's a warning there but it's most certainly not a warning of salvific loss. So let me just break it down again, just verse by verse, but in particular two verses. So first verse says, Unto the angel of the church at Ephesus write, These things save he that holdeth the seven stars in the right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Right, so bear in mind, you know, it's talking about candlesticks and not an actual candle. All right, that's you need to bear that in mind. All right, that gives us, you know, first of all, what is actually going to be spoken of, and, and obviously the, the context right there. All right, another thing to note is angel or angels, you know, are messengers. All right, or they those who herald news, or, or you know, in terms of messengers, they proclaim, evangelize the good news, the gospel. And it's interesting that the Greek. You know word for for you know evangelist all right which is evangelitis all right which means literally etymologically angel so try and bear in mind that an angel evangelist okay and also bear in mind all right that that these candlesticks and i'm going to show you this in a minute you know represent a, a witness or a testimony all right they don't represent you know someone's spirit being condemned into hell if this candlestick is removed or someone's spirit is definitely going to heaven because they've got a candlestick all right we must honestly understand and differentiate the difference between candle and candlestick all right if we go uh use obviously you've got to always compare scripture with scripture so i'm not just saying these things just to just to because it's my own presupposed idea i'm actually saying this from the scripture and we're going to compare the scripture with the scripture in matthew chapter 40 verses 14 to 16 this is the lord speaking he says you're the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick 
and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. And it goes on. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So out of that we can glean straight away that, that these saved people are a light of the world. Okay? And we know this because then Jesus then goes on and says, Neither do men light a candle. Alright, so there's a candle. Alright, so these people are the light of the world and they have a the candle. We know that Jesus is the light of the world, so we know this light that is in these people, in these candles, let's call these candles, alright, they don't hide it under a bushel. It's not hidden. But they put this witness, this testimony of the light of the world, who is Christ Jesus, on top of a candlestick. So it's risen up, so all people can see this light, which is Christ. So that's giving you a little bit of a more of a hint of what the, the candle is and what the candlestick is also. And Jesus also says again in Luke 11.33, No man, when he hath lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. So we can see Christ himself already declaring or differentiating between the, the, the candle and the candlestick so we can see that the candlestick is like the testimony you know it can be shown to all people whereas the candle itself you know isn't the testimony but it is a saved person who has within themselves a testimony okay now in verse 2 like I said I'm not going to break down you know verses 2 3 and 4 because 5 is the important one I want to get to and two, it says, you know, I know thy works and thy labour and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them lies and hast born and hast patient and hast for mine sake hast laboured and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left, you know, the first love. We know what the leading the first love is. That, and we're going to show that you know, not only is the first love, you know, a real kind of fervour and love and passion for Christ, but also it's a leaving the first love of your testimony, of wanting to be on the candlestick, who's wanting to be not hidden, who wants to be an evangelist. So, let me go on to verse, you know, five, which is the, the important one. Right, like this, and it says, remember therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, i.e. change your mind, and do the first works. What are these works? What are these works? Come on, we've got hints everywhere. Or else will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Interesting stuff there. You know, if we glean from what we've read already, you know, we can see where they've fallen from. They've fallen from a place of having a fervour for Christ, you know, of, of evangelizing and getting the, the gospel of grace out there, all right? And, you know, it's interesting that it said, and we'll remove thy candlestick out of his place. So what is this candlestick? So he, what is it? Well, we've worked out that, that the angels are involved, everything's involved, angels are messengers, a messenger is an evangelist. So you're getting a big hint, you can glean straight from these scriptures, that, that the evangelism, the evangelist is going to be removed. And, and your testimony is going to be dead. You know, I have to know, you know, the candlestick will be removed unless they repent. They change their mind. But not the actual candle. The candle is not being removed. The candle is not being put out. You know, and in the scriptures, you can glean, especially if you read uh, Proverbs 20, 27, that the candle, you know, is akin to the man's spirit. All right? And we've actually got within the scriptures, you know, examples of God actually removing the actual candle or putting the actual candle out you know you can have a look at yourself you know seek the scriptures yourself and see if these things are true you know you've only got to look in job 21 17 and proverbs 24 20 where god actually snuffs out or, or gets rid of the actual candle which is again the spirit of a man but again we need to differentiate and this is the whole point between the candle and the candlestick because they are completely different you know, there is a massive difference. You know, so in layman's terms, I suppose what I'm saying is, you know, the witness and the testimony of the Church of Ephesus will be, you know, withdrawn, thus rendering evangelism null and void, dead. 
All right, and, and you know, verse five, you know, by no means hints or implies salvific loss. Not only because you know proper exegetical and contextual reading doesn't suffer, you know, such a untruth, but especially due to the fact that it is Christ Jesus Himself who offers eternal life. He by no means offers probationary life, temporal life, or conditional life. All right, you've only just got to go in through. John's Gospel to find out, you know, what Jesus offers is eternal life, and it's eternal, it's forever, it's ceaseless, it's unended, and it's irrevocable. You know, just that alone should throw a massive truth on anyone's way that the candlestick is not your salvation, it's your testimony and your witness. The candle is your salvation, it's your reborn, it's your spirit made alive, and it is that. That is lifted up by by the candlestick, by the evangelist, by the testimony and witness, you know, of the brethren. But again, in regard to eternal life, what Jesus offers, you've only got to look at John three fifteen, John three sixteen, John five twenty four, John six thirty seven, John six thirty nine, John six forty, John six forty seven, John eleven twenty five and twenty six, and so forth and so forth and so forth. And obviously, we can go through Ephesians and that lot. To, to, to show that, that we are eternally secure and there's no way that the candle can be snuffed out or taken away from a believer. So that I wanted to get out. I said it's a quick message because it could be you know, a really, really deep study and I could go on for hours and hours and hours because there's scriptures everywhere proving this point. But I just want to end on a note about these Nicolotians because they actually, you know, this they actually got right. They actually, although there's getting rubbish at evangelizing they was losing the, the fervor and the love for the lord to, to get the gospel out but one thing they had in their favor and they, they hated the nicolotians and you know historically you know they were you know those who would lord it over people you know they were actually known as the destroyers of people and they would insert dominion over you know the children of god who already had liberty in god you know who was set free were no longer under the bondage of law but were at liberty and they were under this hyper grace, the abounding grace. That's how they were. But the Nicolotians come in, and, and you know they were very cruel people. You know, in, in ecclesiastical terms, you know, or even a setting, the Nicolotians, you know, would be akin to bishops and prelates of the church. You know, and they've gained like a triumphal victory or conquest over the brethren. You know, who were unfortunately compelled and forced to submit, you know, to, to submit to that arbitrary dominion and, and uh, certainly doctrines of men and of devils also. And if you want what that be in, in modern terms, you've only got to see the two biggest kind of movements, denominations within Christendom that love to lord over people, you know, and that would be, you know, likened to the Roman Catholic Church and you know lordship salvationists so they're still here we still have the nicolotians slight twist they obviously don't call themselves nicolotians though they do love to lord it over people but thanks be to god anyway that you know the church of ephesus they didn't take no crap off the you know the, the nicolotians but they did you know what was somewhat against them they were failing in their evangelism uh, and obviously by default their fervor and love for, for christ and the glorious gospel and you know the warning was unless you change your mind you know the evangelism the evangelist is going to be hoiked out yes of course you're saved that candle is representative of your your new spirit you're alive and that that candle you know whether you like it or not you know has got the light of truth the light of christ in it but your candlestick that's going to go your testimony is going to be ruined your witness is going to be just destroyed and you're going to be no use you know for for evangelism whatsoever so i hope that helped i do that's only a brief message again but i just wanted to get out because so many false teachers are preaching this candlestick is representing of eternal life and, and when it is removed because people don't change their mind you know you've lost salvation the cast in hell absolute rubbish and this is why you know hermeneutics is important and context, context, context is king. You really need to read exactly what it means and compare scripture with scripture so you can actually work out what a candlestick is and what a candle is. 
Till with that, I shall bid you all farewell and God bless until next time. Farewell. Farewell. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 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 Creature.